Okay, so uh, hello everybody. I'm sure that uh, you are keeping good and keeping safe. And I am audible and you can see my presentation screen. Okay. Yes, sir. So today's topic, negotiation, is something which is, you know, we are doing on an everyday basis. Now, as uh, professors, I'm sure many of you are, uh, you know, professors and from industry, you would see that on a daily basis, we, we come across so many people with whom we are communicating and the process of negotiation is basically happening every day, okay? Uh, just to tell you, uh, I would not take you to the boring way of explaining what is negotiation and the technicalities. Rather, I would take you through more on the practical side because, uh, you know, as, uh, as professionals, we need to nego negotiate with everybody with clarity and with understanding, okay? Uh, I'm sure you must have heard about NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, where we try to understand people's mind and, you know, speak accordingly so that people find us appealing and they find interest in what we say. I would come to this particular model a little later, but first of all, I would take you through uh, certain aspects of negotiation which can work well for us. And then, of course, I will be sharing examples with you, uh, you know, which I have myself experienced. And then also I would call upon all of you to participate and share your examples. Later, once we have discussed all these points and examples, we would uh, do a case study. Of course, it's a very small case study uh, when, when teachers are put into this side where they have to uh, study and perform. Of course, that is not one thing which we like more. But uh, I have kept a small case study and we will, we will work it out with the understanding with all the points that I will discuss right now. Okay, without a delay, let's see. Don't let emotions influence the negotiation process. Now, as negotiation involves two people, uh, you know, both coming to a common ground, both reaching out to each other because there are certain expectations. When you speak about emotions, you see emotions are something which makes us see certain situation with a filter. Now, what I mean is that in marketing, we say that people shop when they are either feeling sad or they are feeling happy. And uh, through advertisements, what we what you would be able to see is that people try to or companies try to hit upon those emotional aspects and, and make people get associated with the brands. What I'm trying to say is that whenever we are emotional we may not be having the 100% capacity to think logical, okay? Because emotions do create those kind of filter with which we are not able to see very clearly. Uh, specifically, you know, when we are negotiating about things which are close to us. Say, for example, you know, my father recently sold his house and I remember the kind of, money we were expecting for that particular house uh, and the struggle went on for many years and we just could not sell it and at the end my dad was like okay enough is enough let me sell it before i'm alive and uh, you know he brought down the price to almost 50 percent and then sold it off and now when we talk we feel quite satisfied that that was a good decision okay so what i'm trying to say is when there are certain things which are very closely associated with us, say for example, our children or our possession, and we are getting into some kind of negotiation for that with somebody, we always have a higher expectation. Now, what can we do about it? Having higher expectation 
is not bad but not listening to the other person uh like it may happen sometimes in parent teacher meet when we go and speak to the teachers the teachers may have lot many observations for our children and we as parents may get little defensive in accepting all the points that are being raised by the teacher so there the negotiation where the teacher is trying to you know bring in our participation as parents to the child's success is not able to happen well why because as parents we are not receptive or we are not very open to the idea that our child can uh you know commit mistake or can have some kind of difficulty okay so keeping emotions aside is the best way of moving ahead misinterpreting the message i'm sure when all of us came on to the digital way of teaching speaking to the students or making them understand something became more challenging because the chance of misinterpretation goes very high similarly it happens with uh, long term relationships i don't know how many of you have gone through but i have gone through a long term relationship uh, you know over the last one year of course it gets challenging why because there are, there are many many chances where there is misinterpretation happening uh misinterpretation can be avoided by asking questions and clarifying whenever possible so say for example we are getting into some kind of negotiation with people what we need to do we need to ask questions for example if i talk about a interview scenario interview is a negotiation right where the candidate is going for the job and there are the interviewers who are there to recruit the student it's always a good strategy for a student to ask the company people that okay um, if you don't mind can i can i try to understand which kind of candidate or what kind of skills you're looking out for because for a student it's crucial to speak about those aspects which are being looked out by the company okay similarly as professionals when we get into a scenario where we have to negotiate with people it's very important that we get to understand what is there in their mind what exactly they are they are asking for or expecting from the whole deal okay so definitely the winning strategy for a negotiation would be to understand what the other person is looking out for so it's not only about understanding the person but understanding what is going on in that person's mind okay because uh yeah sure i think i think in time uh, we will we will discuss about various examples and i would get to know that where you have faced similar kind of situation do enough research i think this is where we indians are very confident why do i say that is because uh, especially at the time of interviews i have seen uh, whenever a candidate comes for a job interview they they would be supremely confident about who they are and who, what the company is expecting without doing enough research and as soon as a question is being asked okay introduce yourself they just lose it out and at the time of negotiation invariably this happens that when it comes to knowing about your own company when it comes to knowing about yourself we are not very sure i think we take certain things for granted which is not a good strategy so when we talk about research of course it is very very important to know about yourself about the company but also at the same time very important to understand who the person is with whom you are going to have a negotiation which company that person is representing okay let me share one example see there is a question which is being asked that is uh why should i hire you as a professional or as a employee the best way to answer that is to have a relation set in the way that this is who i am this is who you are this is your culture this is what you are expecting and this is what i have to give if that kind of relationship can be set up 
the negotiation becomes really easy. Why? Because you are trying to compare, you are trying to bridge in that gap, you know, by, by giving example and by touching upon all those aspects that is being, um, you know, look out for. So if you are getting into a negotiation, it's very important that you make the understanding very clear for the other person that how you pitch in and how you are the best candidate for the given job role. Okay, so and for doing that, it's very important that we know the other person, we know ourselves, and we bridge up that gap. If you have any problems, any doubts in any of these slides, please keep a note of it. At the end, we will be having the question answer round, and, and there we can have a discussion. Reach out to the concerned person. So this saves time and effort. When I came to Dubai, uh, I did find myself getting into situations where I was not reaching out to the right people. Now, what I mean by right people is the people who are making the decision, okay, the decision makers. Within a company, there can be a huge hierarchy. There can be so many people at different levels. If you're not reaching to the right people, we are wasting time. We are spending too much time. And it is not also guaranteeing that my deal will be done, okay? Invariably, we would get introduced through an intermediary, and that person might have introduced me in a particular manner to that person, which may not work very well for me. So if, as an individual, I am confident, it's always good to go and meet those people or the, the head of the organizations who are the decision makers, you know, and strike the deal. So reach out to the right person and strike the deal. Okay. Leverage. Do it carefully and strategically. Now, leveraging completely depends upon uh, the situation each party is in. All right. Uh, there are situations where we do get emotional and we get carried away. And quickly we realize that the other person was really, very important. And to find that person again, it's going to be a very, very tough job. But in the heat of the situation, we just, you know, become little strict and make the negotiation very stiff. And because of that reason, the other person doesn't find the space and the person leaves, okay? So it's, it's really very important to know how and when to leverage. Say, for example, I have a student who is very good, but somehow that student is not able to perform. Now, being a teacher, if I become very strict and I say, okay, if you don't do it, then you had it. I'm going to deduct 10 marks from your assignment. And the student may get really cheesed off because the student is really good, but somehow that student is not able to perform. Now, as a teacher, if I can try to understand, try to, you know, go a little ahead, find a common ground and find a both, you know, win-win situation for the student and for myself, I think uh, the negotiation can become successful. All right. So that's why it's very important to know how much to leverage, when to leverage and how to go about in that process. We all do it, yeah? And as teachers, definitely we expect our students to listen to us well. And uh, of course, for that, we, we have exams and the quizzes and the tests, what, what we conduct. So listening well is not only about attentiveness, but also how much of interest we are able to create. Uh, you know, touching upon the previous points, if you must have seen, if we have understood the person well, I think we should be able to do this right, okay? We should be able to create a kind of discussion where people would be attentive and they would listen to us carefully. And similar is the case with us. You know, when, when, when we are trying to understand them, when they are putting their uh, request, we are trying to understand it, okay? And, uh, you know, it's very important that you question. You, you ask questions, but 
before doing that make it clear that how you would like them to go about like for example in today's presentation i told you that keep your questions with you i am going to give you time to ask me so it's kind of a negotiation you know because i am there in a flow of thought and if i get stuck in between i may lose it out so that's how i told that and now you know it so the negotiation will happen easily you know so the discussion will happen easily similarly for any kind of discussion if that kind of understanding can be created that okay i'm going to ask you questions will you be okay with it the other person would say all right you can ask me at this particular time the discussion will happen nicely and asking question because it's very very difficult it's very important okay be careful of time know when to break off nowadays um, breaking off from the relationships are becoming easier in india uh see the thing is we talk about business relationship or uh, personal relationships it's very important that we give our best to make sure that the relationship works out because at the first stage if you have entered into the relationship there must have been something which has brought us together okay so we should not be very quick we should not be very uh, you know uh, with, without without thinking we should not decide on this particular aspect because what happens is when we are talking about breaking off either we are breaking off too early or we are breaking off late both may not work profitably okay in the sense that if we think the other person is not good and we quickly decide to you know break off from the deal we might lose out a very very important person we might lose out a very good opportunity we might have not given ourselves enough time to understand the, the whole scenario or the person and spending too much time may not be also good if the things are not working out we should be then really thoughtful and decide because spending too much time means we are wasting uh, money and we are wasting time be balanced not too soft not too hard now negotiation happens where we have kept our emotions away when we are becoming soft or when we are becoming hard of course we are getting restricted you know we are we are not keeping our mind open as researchers as teachers it has been always told to us that we should be unbiased and how can we be unbiased by keeping keeping our mind clear by keeping our mind without any uh, binding okay so when we are balanced we are not too soft we are not too hard the other person finds it comfortable to communicate with us to you know have the kind of conversation they are looking up for uh in many deals what happens is the other person may not feel very comfortable and what is there in their mind they may not speak up clearly now when they are hesitating to speak to the other person that means we are losing out the opportunity to understand them now that is risky okay because if by remaining calm by remaining easy we can make the other person communicate to us and give us those clues with which we can reach out to a successful negotiation then it is up to us to make sure that we are able to do that all right so as a good negotiator we need to do that understanding the other person set the ground rules now setting the ground rules means that we are making ourselves clear we are we are telling the other person this is who i am this is kind of expectation i have and i would like to go ahead in this particular way right on these lines i would need to understand what you feel okay many business you know there there are classic examples where businesses request all of you to please kindly mute your uh, microphone there, there are many situations many many businesses where uh, participants please mute your mobiles please mute your audio right 
So there are there are many many businesses which initiate with a very clear cut understanding that they have a short term goal. Short term goal like they would like to make profits and go out. They really don't care about building a brand. Which kind of businesses they can be? Uh, you must have seen those use and throw pens. Now this is a very very bad example, but uh, I I I do like this example. So say for example, I am a company which manufactures uh, use and throw pen. I make these opaque pens where you can't see the ink level. All right. I find a manufacturer and I tell them that you manufacture these pens in such a manner that there is very little ink in that pen. So the person may use it twice or thrice, and the ink may finish off. I don't care. So, so we are not talking about ethics over here. We are talking about profit. Okay. So in these kind of situations, when a company has this kind of lookout, so the company is not looking for a long term. The company is just trying to sell, make quick profit, and go out. Now, you as a serious business partner, all right, who is thinking long term, you get into a understanding with these people why because you thought them to have a long term uh, vision but because there wasn't a clear understanding there was a mismatch and when they leave you find that something is going wrong but it's too late okay so similarly it's very important that we set down ground rules and we understand the each party clearly stating your lookout so once we have set up the ground rule it's important to tell them okay this is stage 1 this is stage 2 this is stage 3 and this is how i see my company growing how do you think you can be part of it and do you think that you are looking out for this kind of a journey all right so the association will become stronger if that understanding is clear from the starting that what kind of association we are looking out for okay just in the case you know when when we when we are going for marriage okay marriage is long term so what kind of negotiation happens the negotiation happens for a long term relationship right so it would not be like if i'm going for marriage i'll say okay for how many days you're going to be there okay because the understanding is very clear that this is long term and because the relationship is for long term we will be having discussions or we will having those points to discuss which are related to long term okay and that's why uh you know stating your lookout your expectation from the association makes things clear to both the parties all right this is somewhere related to the emotional part okay taking you little away from the core concept i'm a spiritual person and believe in helping people many people come to me and they ask me how do we know exactly who has to be helped and if somebody is not giving me the right response to the help i have given what i'm supposed to do next do i carry on helping people and keep finding people not appreciating what i do uh i tell them that you need not help a person who is not coming to you and asking for help as a teacher i have find myself going out of the way and, and uh, helping students and many a times i don't get the right kind of response from the student why because the student is not there in in the receptive mode right the student is not there in the receptive mode the student is probably in a particular situation where from he or she is not able to appreciate the kind of help i am trying to provide okay now help is what it's kind of a negotiation why because if i am finding a student not doing a particular thing right as a teacher i would go and i would try to suggest to the student that okay this is how you should do it and the student may say please mind your own work why you are bothering me okay nowadays the students are different okay gone are those days where uh, we used to be so respecting and caring for our teachers 
those days are gone. So we can expect our, our students to say anything to us on our face. So yeah, it, it does happen. I can share one of uh, one of my examples, which which became really very tricky to handle. So I am there in a very serious kind of a conversation, and I'm an emotional teacher. When I'm there in the class, I'm really emotional. I am seeing to it that each and every student is learning. I'm seeing to it that the examples or the um, exercises that I'm using there in the class is making sense to most of the people. And that's how what happens is I do get emotional with all the aspects I, I do in the class. Now, there is this one student who is a top performer, very bright, very good student. And she stands up and she's like, sir, all the activities that you do does not make sense to me. Okay, just imagine the class is full 100, 120 students there in the class. And this, this girl stands up and, and she speaks that. And I'm there in between a very serious conversation. And I just get a jolt, you know, I'm like, what, excuse me? She's like, yeah, all, all, all the activities that you make us do is, is uh, ridiculous. Doesn't make sense. I waited for 15 seconds. I was like, let me take a pause. I'm not able to understand what's happening. And then I made a pitch, you know, very quickly that what to do, how to, how to negotiate with such a fixated student. And then I told her, you know, you may be right, but as a teacher, what I see is that masters is a final stage. Final stage where you shift into a corporate world where you have to just perform. You may not have time to sit and learn things on a practical front, you know, academically, and then you may not get this kind of support system. So whatever activities you're doing here is preparing you for next of your life. So even though you may find this activity redundant, which I as a teacher feel that it's very important, you know, because from your limited knowledge, you're not able to uh, find the relation between the topic and the activity, because the activity is on the practical front, uh, you need to relax, right? And when I gave that pitch, 80% of the class stood by. They were like, no, 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 sir. These activities are really important. We find a lot of learning. Now, these activities are behavioral activities, managerial skill development activities. Now, that, that student was looking out from the topic perspective, that this is the topic, this activity is not specifically for the topic. But as a teacher, what I've done is, that I have taken certain aspects of those topic and try to put it in a way that the student would execute when the student joins the corporate world. Okay, so I'm just trying to give you an example where uh, too much caring may uh, you know, put us in situation uh, where the other person may retaliate. So we need to be prepared um, if, if we are doing so. Money is not honey. Uh, of course, we are materialistic people. Who is not? Uh, so money does play an important role in our life. And it does make us feel connected and driven by. But certainly, I'm sure many of you are there in such a life stage where you have surpassed that particular aspect where money is not the primary goal, yeah? Money is secondary. And frankly speaking, I have seen for myself, and that's what I tell everybody, that if you are really good in what you're doing, money automatically comes. You don't have to think about money, you don't have to run behind money. And generally, all those people who run behind money end up not having money, <laughs> because, uh, because that is what the beauty is. So you perform and, and money automatically comes. So having a negotiation specifically keeping that money aspect in our mind will make us stiff, you know? Because if you have said, like for example, when we are talk, when I'm talking about the house my dad sold, there was emotion attached to the house, okay? So with that, there is a money that gets 
you know, fixed with that particular property or, or with that idea. So you're like, no, no, this idea is going to cost you this much only. There is no, there is no uh, you know, one or two option. But if you're not giving option, you need to understand that person has the choice to say no simply. And if you have calcul cal calculated it right, losing that person, if you are doing better, it's all right. But losing that person, if you are losing much more than getting another person, you better work out a common ground. You know? So rather than getting emotional or getting too fixated with the idea of money, uh, it, it's, it'll be a better thing to become flexible. Okay? So losing out a little bit of money is all right, but at the same time, you may look out for the other benefits because when you get into a relationship, it's not always about the money, right? It's about the time. It's about the, the relationship itself, okay? It's, it's about the other factors which, which are attached uh, to that particular deal, okay? Look at this image. I, I found this image to be really very interesting and uh, specifically to what I wanted to communicate uh, with this particular point. Winning in my mind. Uh, you know, my last association was with Army Institute of Management from where I did my MBA also. So, and, and my father being from Army, we have, rather I have met many senior officials uh, in my life. And they would always tell you that, uh, you know, when we go to battle, it is, it is about winning. And of course, that kind of spirit, that kind of energy is required when you are there at the battlefield. Now, every negotiation is not a battlefield. Okay. Negotiation is where we are trying to find the common ground, where we are trying to find the win-win situation for both the parties. Okay. So in these kind of situations, what happens is we need to move little away from what we were expecting probably. And the other person would also have to come to another space, right? And that's what bargain is all about, okay? So we need not become too fixated with the thought that I am the strongest and I'm going to beat the other person down. No, it's about finding the common ground where both of us can have some kind of winning factor to each one of us, all right? Okay. Have plan A, plan B, plan C. That's what we say, right? Is it good? I, I was, I was um, you know, watching this Arnold Schwarzenegger's video where he says that having plan A, plan B, plan C makes our energy get diverted. And when our energy gets diverted, we are not able to give 100% to one idea. Now you see, this is when it comes to ourselves, when it comes to setting goal for our life. This need not be confused between the kind of options we are giving away to the other person. All right? Because we can't we can't tell the other person, you know what, you should have just one goal. And this is what the this is what the idea is, just buy it. That doesn't happen. So when it comes to negotiation, you need to have multiple options which you which, which should be equally appealing. All right. It should be equally appealing and it should be put forward in such a manner that the other person finds it to be appealing. All right. Let me share one example right now, because I think this example is prominent at this particular uh, point. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of buying a new car. It's been almost a year. I've come to Dubai. Now it's time that I should go for it. So I was considering a Mazda car and a Honda car. Now, Honda was becoming convincing to me because Mazda cars were a little expensive. So I thought of going for a pre-owned Mazda car. So I went to the showroom and I went to this particular person who is the, um, you know, the, the store owner or, or that particular section manager. He took me to the store and, and he showed me all the cars he has. So I told him that this is what I want. And he said that, okay, these cars are there. I saw it. And then I said, okay. And he said, okay. All right. I came out of the showroom and I went to the Honda showroom. 
there i found a person who was so nice you know his, his shift was over 7:30 the time was over he was about to go home he had packed his bags and everything i saw that and as soon as he saw me he came running and he took me through he took one hour to explain without having any negative facial expression and took me through and and that was so convincing i was so happy with the whole process i was convinced this is the car i want of course the car is also very nice but i'm i'm saying that the whole process was so convincing and so nice when i came out of the honda showroom i booked the car anyway so when i came out of the honda showroom it just came to my mind that if that mazda guy should have taken little bit of effort in asking me that what is that i want what is going on in my mind which are the other brands i'm thinking and why i am thinking that and would have given me options that okay because you have this in your mind one two three option choose right and you know he being a person who is selling cars i would have listened to him carefully i would have treated him as an expert all right and and he could have told me okay one two three option if you are thinking of honda you may not get this so you may go for master right i would have got convinced because i was anyway wanting to book a car on the same day right and it's fantastic to see how people can lose customers who are convinced you know who are convinced to make a purchase and immediate purchase you know it's not that that i am i'm thinking that i'm going to take 10 days or one month so it was fantastic so that's why i thought that i'm going to share this example with you because this is a classic example of this particular point where you know we as an expert need to provide uh, multiple options and convince the other person that you know these options are one of the best so you choose out of them because by choosing one of them you will be successful yeah wow this is my favorite <laughs> choosing the best alternative to a negotiated agreement and of course this is important why because every person needs to get that choice needs to get that opportunity to find the best alternative right and that's why we need to be open to ideas if we are thinking that this one is the good one we should have options to choose and then we should understand which is the best alternative to go for okay so the agreement or the negotiation towards the agreement happens based on this particular aspect okay amazing okay so before we move ahead these are all the points that we have discussed till now please take 5 minutes i'm going to give you 5 minutes look through all these points and all the questions that you have mentioned let me take this uh, before we move ahead because uh, after this section we will do a case and we will discuss certain examples so i want that you should have clarity to all these aspects so just take 5 minutes and uh, you may you may let me know if you have any question to all this no questions means i have been really successful delivering the idea or it was boomerang it went over the head but i don't think uh, that i did any anything that difficult okay so i i believe everybody has understood all the points this is fantastic i feel so proud all right so as we went through all those points these are the aspects we should definitely keep in mind separate the person from the issue again going little away from the topic uh 
and and because we do it all the time you must have seen whenever we get into some kind of argument yeah some kind of uh, misunderstanding with the other person mostly these people are our family people okay with whom we are very very strongly connected and we are having negotiations on a daily basis and what happens is we are not able to separate out uh, the person with the issue all right and what happens when we get agitated with somebody we blame the relationship yeah we blame the relationship rather than blaming that particular aspect or blaming that particular situation what we are doing wrong there has to be a high authority like like you know you have a power flow in the organization a, a small problem can be handled by a lower manager little bigger problem senior manager and when the problems are just not getting solved then the director comes in right why because this hierarchy makes things easy to resolve and ha- as we go up the higher echelon these people we find to be more convincing so as soon as we reach to the relationship level okay we blame the relationship we have finished all the layers right we have finished all the layers of discussion relationship to my personal understanding should be kept at such a level where it never get questioned never ever okay so if a relationship has been decided has been set it should be kept absolutely on the top never to be touched like god okay and then because we have that highest authority already set that okay this relationship is set when we when we have fight with our parents we we, we we don't say that okay let me let me choose another parent why because we have that understanding that okay boss he is my father she is my mother i can't change them in this particular life okay similarly why not decide it for each and everything in our life that makes it easy and that makes us more careful getting into a kind of relationship right as sensible people it's very very important that we get into a relationship with complete thought it should not be that you know we enter something and we're like oh my god this is wrong no why didn't you think over it take your time nobody asking you to be in hurry all right so keep that relationship on the top and then have negotiation keep the issue separate keep the person separate right and with this kind of clarity life gets really easy negotiation happens very very easily we got to empathize we got to understand we got to listen all right and we got to be careful about about everything that we do and everything what we say negotiate not position focused but interest oriented okay in india definitely that happens we we associate too much with the position um uh, you know even though we are not feeling very great about that person but because that person holds a particular position we do everything and anything possible that's okay to some extent if that person is your boss <laughs> the boss is always right so that's okay but not every time it's required that you have to say yes it's it's very important that as an as a professional we are able to set up our ground we should be confident enough in telling them that no this is what i personally feel is right okay and i'm not saying that you need to be rude but what i'm trying to say is that you should know what is right and what is wrong right and then only negotiation can happen negotiation cannot happen if you keep saying yes for everything okay if position is something that influences you as a professional too much you would keep saying yes for everything right and and i have seen that ha- happening with many of the people and they are so disgruntled in their life because every every pressure every setback comes to the family okay that means if you are not able to speak up there in the organization or to the people it it just holds on within you and wherever you find the soft target it just comes out and soft target is generally the family people i'm not speaking about my wife okay so uh, you know what what i'm trying to say is um, don't don't negotiate based on the position have the intention 
have the clarity about what is the expected outcome and then negotiate develop criteria that a solution must fulfill all right that means it's not only about how you are negotiating it's about what is the winning part you know if we are talking about the final goal what is the final goal how it is going to benefit if i am coming down two steps is it still profitable all right what if i lose out the, this deal will it be still profitable so you need to have the kind of clarity that all right two step plus two step minus how the things are going to be you need to understand the whole periphery of of the scenario okay you should have different options to choose from like i said when as a customer we are going we are expecting choices right similarly we need to give choices to anybody that may be you know my my daughter is 7 years old and uh, I, i treat her as an individual and i tell you when i when i treat her as an individual making her part in every decision uh, you know i and my wife uh, we make in our family she feels empowered right like i expect choices my daughter also expect choices right and i have made sure that from the time uh, you know she was born we give her choices and now she is in an age where she can decide for herself and we respect that and i tell you it has given that um you know that that side to her where she feels empowered she is not dependent on us and, and and that's a good thing because today's kids are really smart similarly today's scenario um you know business scenario or work scenario they are very different it's changing evolving every day so it's very important that that we understand and appreciate the fact that it's very important to give options to the other person all right wonderful so this is uh, where we uh, you know reach to the lecturing mode and here after i'm going to uh, take you through the case if you have any questions you may please ask sir sorry to interrupt you yeah please uh, please go to the chat box there are some queries questions actually you have asked about it uh, in the in the okay in the chat box yes sir all right i see only one question yeah the okay. same doubts from all the participants yeah all right so like i said i will go back to the presentation again so batna is where i am giving the choice or the option Uh, for the other person to choose based on uh, you know the best alternative they are finding okay so that's why it's it's important that we should have multiple options okay because the other part uh, other other person would like to uh, reach out to the best alternative based on their interest or their need yeah that's why all right okay so shall we get started with the case uh before i do that i would request somebody to help me how can i upload sure, a file sir. can i upload a file can i upload a file can i upload a file on this all right sure no no problems if i am not able to upload there is no issue let me let me take you to the case okay so this case is about mariana island which is uh, under the united states of america and this island has speciality that it has ash all right and this ash is being used for a company which is into uh making cosmetics so this is a beautiful island um and and has been governed by the us government and 
So this case is about uh, Mariana Ash, which is a luxury cosmetic company and also is the name of the island. Okay. Uh, in this case, there are a few key people like uh, Alan, who is the uh, general council member. Uh, there is uh, Palacio, who is the governor of the, uh, the island. Then there is Rachel, who is the CEO of this particular organization. And there is uh, Lorezo, who is the reporter. All right. And, uh, you know, I actually wanted to share. So, uh, Dr. Kanchan, can I yeah, email it to you? And you can probably share that particular file to everybody. Is, is that okay? Uh, Dr. Carson, are you there? Yes, sir, we can do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sending the file right now. Dr. Kanchan, I have shared the file with you. You may please uh, share this particular case uh, with everybody. So, uh, just to make uh, the whole discussion easy, because I'm because we don't have that much time, you may just go through the case quickly. So, uh, you know, I can I can make it easy by telling you these points. So, in the case, you would be able to find all these people who hold important position in 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 the whole discussion. Now, what is happening in this particular case is is that there is a there is a tax hike which has been proposed and uh, this tax hike situation has been happening for for quite some time and i think this is the fifth time that the tax has been hiked for this particular company by the government and uh, which is which is of almost 400% okay now why uh, the, the government is doing that because this particular company has exceeded the threshold uh, of mining this particular ash, which was set by the government. Of course, uh, the revenues for this company has also increased over the time. So this makes the government feel that the company should pay this much of tax. All right. Now, when so much of tax is being put to the company, of course, the company is not very happy and they want to decide on what has to be done. So in this scenario, keeping all the negotiation points which we have thought, uh, the question that I would like to ask you is, shall company pay the tax increase proposed by the governor of the island? Okay. So when you go through the case quickly, I'm going to give you 15 minutes, right? And you may, you may just go through the file which Dr. Kanchan is sharing with you all. Find these people and, and find... Uh, those key aspects which I have just discussed with you and come up with alternatives, okay? What do you think the company can do in order to make their presence felt, in order to convince the governor that this is not the way they should put the situation to them, all right? And then we will discuss. So take 15 minutes time and uh, prepare a statement. Thanks. So when we are talking about this particular deal to happen, there can be these scenarios, okay? Which are these scenarios? Win, lose scenario, where I lose, the other, the, I win, the other person loses, okay? That means either I have been uh, very strict with the things or I am very flexible, whichever way. So there is a scenario where I would win and the other person would lose. There is a possibility where I would lose, the other person will win. Right. This is the only way, you know, because if, if one person loses, the other person wins. 
there is another situation where there is a compromise situation both the parties compromise and and they find you know that it is it is the best way to do there is another scenario where both the parties lose because they are not able to find a deal and probably they were the best people to have the deal and there is another person where both the parties win why because they are able to speak each other's requirement very nicely and both are able to make profits okay so consider these options whichever best works in this particular situation uh you may choose a strategy accordingly and do tell that how how they should go about okay let me let me get back and uh drive you or take you through this particular case as you are uh, seeing all these aspects mentioned you would find in the case that they have spoken about how the company and why the company is getting irritated uh, with the government policies one that of course they are the, the government has been doing it on a regular basis for any company which may not be a very uh, you know easy thing to do because there are so many policy changes that may happen should we look for a solution with both of them well that's what that's what uh in the case if you have gone through you would find that there could be possible options possible options like the company may threaten that they will close their business uh why that can become like a threat because of course the government would lose out the opportunity for having a profit making company in their island yeah which is definitely adding on to the tax now say if the company leaves that island and goes to some other island what's going to happen that the government is going to lose right and what the company is going to lose the company's name is based on the island right now if the company goes to another island they cannot change the brand name right and the brand name then would not make too much of sense they may not be able to get uh the kind of raw material which they are able to get right now staying there on that particular island okay so when a negotiation pitch has to be thought it has to be thought on these lines and if not negotiation then can they use the reporter in pressurizing uh the government that they should uh bring down the tax amount or should uh you know really get threatened by the thought that the company is going to leave yeah uh you must have also seen that why the government is taxing them high because they have increased the threshold of mining so can they reduce the production okay so if they reduce the production that the company if they reduce the production then of course they don't have to mine beyond the threshold right if they don't mind beyond the threshold they don't have to pay that extra tax so will that be a win win situation where the company brings down their profitability by reducing their amount of production okay or yes as many of you are suggesting that a win win situation can be reached where negotiation can happen where both the parties can appreciate and understand each other's need and a common ground can be set up okay okay uh see miss need to what what i personally believe and you you must have already seen that over the years the company and the government have definitely developed some kind of rapport you know and and that's how so many uh, changes in and and implementation of uh, tax rules have happened so i'm sure uh you know uh, it has come to a level where having a negotiation will require certain extra people or some extra thought so yeah so my intention of giving this case to you was to uh, you know look through all the aspects use all of what we have learned till now and see how we connect all these aspects and make a common ground happen you know and and i'm and i'm sure that uh, you know you you could have you know or rather you you must have 
uh, taken the learning through this case. They can empathize on the good that they have done for the peoples of the community and bargaining for curbing some tax. Which true, true. So uh, yes, from the company's perspective, if the company can state very clearly that uh, okay, we may be earning a lot of profits, but we are also giving you so much of tax. If you can, uh, you know, give us some kind of breathing time or can give, give us some breathing space, then uh, we can give you probably a little higher than this. And, and you give us the option of mining a little extra because, of course, if we are selling more, we will be able to make profit more. And from the government side, of course, even they need to understand that if at all the company decides to leave, then do they have another option? Do they have another company lined up which is ready to come and has equally good uh, you know, um, reputation or can give equal amount of profits. Okay, amazing. Fantastic. Um, so, hello, sir. Can I say something? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Rather than typing, I thought I'll talk quickly. Uh, what I felt is um, government is not, as such, should not be interested just in taxes or money. But government should be interested in saving that um, island. So, uh, so they are raising the taxes so that they'll not um, take more uh, what you call from there. So, what I feel is that uh, the company should also try understanding or inventing or researching on something parallel to that raw material, and so government can help them doing some research on how it can be substituted. Um, uh, by researching, so if that will be a win-win situation, I thought right. of. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very nice. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you. That's, sir. that's very interesting. Sure. Anybody else would like to share their thoughts? Okay. No problems. So can we keep the case aside because we still have ten minutes? Now I would like to, uh, you know. If, if anybody wants to share their personal experience on uh, how they have negotiated in some of the unique examples, if, if you have something interesting, if you would like to share, it would be really nice. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Ravi Jadav here. May I share uh, my thought on that particular case? Uh, basically, in addition to yeah. what the madam said, the, uh, basically companies already, I think I read on that case study, I think it is a uh, uh, company has done uh, most violation on the rules of the of uh, particular digging of uh, that particular ash. So the company has the only one solution to make the compromise with the government, understanding the uh, perspective of the government. Uh, clarification should be taken from the government, and uh, what the uh, uh, action should be taken care from the company's end, and assure the government that we can take care for in the future, and. Uh, because it is a, uh, a parallel company also standing on there, yeah? then uh, uh, there's a loss of only company, not the government. On consideration that company, yeah, company has to that it's their loss because they are earning uh, good uh, profit and in uh, previous years. So the company has to be compromised on that particular thing and uh, may, right. make the work with the uh, government and uh, uh, and follow the rules of the government, make the new rules and all these things uh, for uh, digging that particular ash from that uh, particular island. The only one solution is to make the compromise from the company side. Mm. On the okay. All right. See, yes, th th that's what I'm saying, that, that each one of us may have a very unique approach towards the given situation. Similarly, uh, you know, the government have a very unique approach and the company may have a very unique approach but it's just that that whatever approach we take if it can work as win-win for both the parties and everybody involved it is the best thing to do you know and and that is what negotiation is if if we are learning all these aspects related to negotiation it is just that because we would like a win-win situation to happen because a win-win is the best scenario okay uh, I winning and you losing may not be very good because in long term that is that is not beneficial. Okay, so so that's how. Okay, so there is nobody who would like to share their experience related to their life. 
So we we have understood the case. Now now let's keep the case aside. Let's take five minutes, and if anybody wants to share something, otherwise from us, my side, I'm I'm really thankful for this opportunity, and it was wonderful interacting with all of you. I hope that I I have been able to pass on the basic understanding of this particular topic. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation, sir, and topic. I explained very clearly. Thank you so much. Thank you.